Why is it that the 5th Gen Honda Prelude doesn't get more love? Even though I have extremely fond memories with Honda Preludes, I have rarely filmed them. They're hard to find in decent condition, and more people build things like the old Civics rather than the Prelude. But I'm here to give the argument that the Honda Prelude shouldn't be overlooked. It's a ton of fun, and this one has an amazing story. This one was bought as a beater off of Craigslist, and it has some of the most ancient early 2000s technology in the tuner scene I've ever seen. It has an H22A engine swap, and and is just charming to rev to 8,000 RPM. So why does the Honda Prelude get so much hate? Let's go for a drive and find out. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanna give a huge thanks to today's sponsor, Masterworks. I mean, what's the most you would pay for a car? 35 million for a Ferrari 355? Or 48 million for the 250 GTO? Pretty insane numbers, I know, but that actually happens. <laughs> but what if I told you that artwork sold for both of those combined? What I'm talking about is Andy Warhol's Silver Car Crash, which sold for a whopping $105 million in 2013. I recently learned that that in some cases, contemporary art prices like that could even increase more than stocks. And now you can add contemporary art to your portfolio with ease thanks to Masterworks. And you can purchase shares in great masterpieces from artists like Pablo Picasso, Banksy, Andy Warhol, and more. This is because of their revolutionary approach where each painting is broken down into shares. So you can buy them like buying shares in a company. So then when a piece you invested in returns a profit, you get a return. As simple as that. You create your account with a traditional bank account, you pick major works of art to invest in, or the new blue chip diversified art portfolio, identify your investment amount, then hold shares in works by Picasso, or trade them in Masterworks secondary marketplace. And my friends at Masterworks are giving my viewers priority access to skip their wait list. So skip the wait list and invest in blue chip art for the very first time by signing up for Masterworks using my unique URL. So go ahead and skip the line and click on the Masterwork link in the description to get started. What is going on? Today we are in Super VTEX <laughs> in a fifth gen prelude. I've never done a fifth gen and before everybody goes, well, if you're gonna do a fifth gen prelude, why isn't it like a dumb, nice one? Well, because the story of this one is fascinating. So can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey guys, uh, this is Brian here, over here in, in Texas, and this is my 1998 prelude. What really caught my eye was the H22A engine, and at the same time, it's running on an ancient, ancient Honda to piggyback. And not only that, it has a whole bunch of random goodies because you just found this car online pretty much, yes, right? Yes, I found it on Craigslist and we all know Craigslist is kind of dead at this point. Yeah, <laughs> the random Gucci speaker <laughs> stuff on it and like the, there's just so much weird stuff in this. There's That's like why a pager button in the corner. There's a pager button <laughs> and then we're in 2022 and there's a pager button. But 5-speed transmission, H22A, the engine bay was obviously done, like you said, by somebody who actually cared. Mm -hmm. um, it's not too much of a rat's nest. These originally came with the H22A fours, I believe. Yes, um, all they, the all the fifth gens did in the U.S. My favorite line of today was, you know, David, that check engine lights on. It's actually better. It runs better <laughs> when it's on. It's, you can tell it's idling a little better. It's not. Getting oh yeah, the it's super bounce. smooth. Yeah. <laughs> considered quote unquote the big block of yep. Honda until the K-Series really took over. But yeah, the H22 being a 2.2 liter compared to the 1.8 liters of the B-Series and stuff, people were like, oh my God, 2.2 liters? What's That's, torque? <laughs> what's torque, bro? <laughs> it's so funny. I'll just big toe it. Ready? Okay, I'm SpongeBob big toeing this and you'll know exactly when it kicks on. And... <laughs> ah! oh, I love it. The fifth gen, if you did some subtle little to it you can make it look a lot better than factory because factory i feel like it had too much of like this four by four status yes and very much so it just it looked like it wasn't lip low enough either like even body low it's just too much so you have kind of this fiberglass kit on it from a bygone era right? yes it's like a caminari caminari something like that that's that early 2000s kind of style molding the body kits and stuff and the chrome like, valve cover you know like <laughs> yep there's also a bunch of leftover 
uh, speaker system wiring. So like, there's oh, definitely yeah. some crazy sound system with this thing at one point. It's got this old, torn up Recaro. <laughs> I don't know if it's yeah, fake or real. We don't know I don't if it's know. a rip off or not. <laughs> they, they have like a, they had like an option with uh, that you could get at the dealer where you could have full leather, and okay. so they like wrap your your other seats and you could have the leather seats from the factory is an option has yeah. the carbon fiber option as well so wait so that was an option an yeah. oem option there is an accessory kit wow. you can get the carbon fiber um, dash the the main bezel here and then the switch switch panels as well and it yeah. all came with the car that's really nice so it, i'm sorry i have to point out the blue mirror <laughs> yeah. like it's so it's so funny to me it's like it's like you pull up to a car and you're like don't don't say anything. I know. It's I know. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, rah, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> One, it was way too heavy for its own good. And that's why a lot of people didn't build them. Two, if this thing was rear wheel drive, it probably would have been the best S14 competitor ever. Cause you have an H series motor or an all motor Honda for drifting. That'd be amazing. And at the same time, the other Civics existed. You know, so a lot of people would go towards those or even the fourth gen Prelude, the one right before this one, which mm -hmm. is lighter and a little bit more old. But I've always thought the fifth gen looks really nice with very subtle things, like the, the straight tails on the back. And do you remember when that one uh, Camaro generation came out and everyone was like, oh, it's a fifth gen Prelude. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but this thing has a nice little kit on it. It needs a little bit of love. You know, I know yes. that you're going into this to kind of fix it up. Out of all the old Hondas, excuse me, the 15 Prelude's interior really held up. It still feels nice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel too out of whack nowadays. Still at the same steering wheel as pretty much all the other Hondas. But I just always love the side profile of these cars. They're just nice and long and elegant. Yes. And yeah, it's just a good looking car. It just got outshined by everything else. That's the problem. It's kind of like the new Alfa Romeo Giulia, way different subject. I just drove one, but it wasn't so much the car was bad. It's because its competition was so good. Mm -hmm. And I think you know? a big thing too that may have killed it is the S2000 came out right when this was set towards oh, the end. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they're like, hey, by the way, new engine, two seater. We're celebrating the millennium. That fifth gen, yeah, don't worry about it. Go buy the S2000. Exactly. And they had the, the Cord Coupe as well. So it had the Cord exactly. It was just kind of like, didn't know what it wanted to be a sports car. It feels like it's this in-between car where they just didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Even though it still had a sports car vibe to it. And a lot of my friends in high school had these and they loved them, but it was kind of like a stepping stone for them. You know, they yes. did, they built these and they moved on to other things. But you never see somebody be like, this is like the car I'm obsessed with, you mm -hmm. know, out of all the Honda platforms. The power band of the H22 is very different. And a lot of people, don't get me wrong, people do boost the H series, mm -hmm. but I know with the compression difference and the cylinder walls are a little bit thinner, to my knowledge, a lot of people strayed away from it, which also got people not to build them either. Exactly, a lot of people would just I think put them in um, Civics and stuff as a yeah do all motor H yeah. series and EG or something and then it's a game changer mm -hmm. right so this thing's running on Honda data but mm -hmm. the piggyback system if you don't know what a piggyback system is it's <laughs> literally I'm, in layman terms it's tricking the computer the factory computer to do something it's not supposed to do because mm -hmm. back then standalones weren't as good none of that was as good so they just plug this chip they put the you put a chip on it yeah and it just somehow works yeah, it's chipped man a lot of the jz <laughs> cars did the same thing right. <laughs> 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 brakes are good <laughs> v-tech that was awesome i saw past eight. Oh yeah it, heck it, yeah it was i was like rev limiter <laughs> rev limiter I haven't even tested it, I'm not on, I'm being honest. <laughs> okay, I'm sensing a theme here. Like anytime somebody's like, is this your first time passenger? Uh, yes. Okay, so there you go. Anytime I give <laughs> yeah. a ride in, maybe it's cause, maybe it's just like feeling it out or whatever, but it's so funny. I always get that same comment going, I didn't know my car could do that. It's <laughs> I, um, I ordered a full suspension kit. I'm gonna do all control arms, ball yeah, joints, it'll tie change rod ends. So funny, it's got the uh, ground control. Got ground control uh, sleeves over Coney's. Oh, so, okay. Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask what. Coil yeah, over. I was gonna ask what coilovers you had. <laughs> like Coney's. Oh yeah. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Look, downshift a second. <laughs> gang, 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 Honda gang. gang. That's why, like, when somebody has a really fun Honda, I almost never say no to driving them because <laughs> they all feel different but the same. 
you kind of, it's like when you go to a restaurant and you're really scared to choose something different because of that, there's that one sandwich you love so much. You're like, well, what if I get it and I don't like it? That's kind of <laughs> like with the Hondas, right? A lot of people are like, I'm so obsessed with this platform because of the fun factor. I can't try anything else. This has turned into way more than just a prelude video, but, <laughs> but it's kind of my point though. Like this is kind of a swan song of a bygone era of Honda. Like once they changed over to the RSX and everything, mm -hmm. gone were those super lightweight, very unsafe, you know, <laughs> Hondas. But that's what yeah. made them so fun, right? You can tell the Prelude's a little bit heavier than the other Hondas, but it's, to me, it still has really good steering input. It feels really good. At the same time, you're on pretty big wheels too. You don't mm -hmm. have a lot of sidewall. They're 17 inch yeah. uh, RSX type S wheels for 0506. Is that what they, okay. Mm -hmm. I, they I, bolt right I on. I couldn't recognize them. I was like, I feel like they're from the RSX, but I wasn't quite sure. Mm -hmm. That's why you ask questions, people. <laughs> you know what the number one rule of the car scene is? You don't know everything. That's why you just <laughs> ask. And it's funny with the H series, you can really tell the difference of like when VTEC's kicking on. Mm -hmm. Cause it'll have like nothing. nothing. It'll be like, hello. <laughs> And then it'll be like, ah, like out of nowhere. You can definitely tell it's a granddaddy of the later engines, you know, mm -hmm. it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, you gotta man. get the chirp, dude. Mm -hmm. Like that's how, you know, it's funny. I just have flashbacks to all the old, 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 like 480p YouTube videos mm -hmm. of people like, their their video title would be like, banging v it would be like, <laughs> yeah, and it's just them like, <laughs> I chirp third, I chirp fourth, bro. Chirp fourth. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, it, yeah, you definitely know. It mm -hmm. starts screaming. I know the prices are going up with all the old Japanese cars and everything, but there's a reason why Honda guys stay Honda guys, right? Because they have so much fun in an all-motor four-cylinder because Honda was so smart with their marketing and so smart with, like, how the power comes on. It's like, hey, check this out. You have good fuel economy, but you can have fun whenever, you know? Pretty much every company did variable valve timing, yes. right? But they did it in such a dramatic way that it's their signature. I mean, when you think Honda is, what do you think of VTEC? Exactly. It's, it's insane how reliable it is, too, the system itself. It, it shouldn't, because MyVec wasn't. The, uh, the what, there's a BMW one too, I can never remember. That thing, Vanos, Vanos, those are yeah. not great. Like, all of those are like, whenever you meet somebody who has an old BMW, they're like, yeah, Vanos delete. <laughs> you never, you don't really hear VTEC delete that mm -hmm. often. In, in, matter of fact, most people go, yeah, I lowered my VTEC. You know, I, I took the ECU and I lowered it down. Put it down to 4,000 yeah, or something. Rather like than five, six or whatever. Is there anything about this car in your ownership experience you wish was different? Or are you just like, it's pretty good for just buying a beater online, you know? Uh, buying a beater online, I I am shocked at the, the health of the engine, the swap, how it was done. I'm a YouTube mechanic. I just look up videos, do little <laughs> yeah. things, you know, here and there, try to save some money. At least you admit it, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, I went to UTI. <laughs> it's like, no, I just watch YouTube videos. So I, I ended up taking it to a, a local shop called Roachworks and they did a... <laughs> yeah, wow, like out of nowhere. <laughs> but I had them do a, a compression test, timing belt, water pump, all that stuff sure. to make sure everything's good because time belt goes, the valves are done. Oh, absolutely. These these did notoriously jump timing a lot. Yes. Uh, my friend Matt, the one I was talking about earlier, his on a road trip one time jump timing and we were like, uh-oh. But he, <laughs> he miraculously made it to where we were going, like an hour or change away. And got to save it. So, oh, yeah, got to save lucky it. man. And also, you do have a vibrant muffler, right? Yes, vibrant muffler, and I think it's just custom. Uh, all the way back, headers all the way back. Well, that's also why it doesn't sound like a freaking beehive. want to get it first, you can. <laughs> All right. Do we have traction control? I don't think so. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good prelude. Don't sleep on the prelude. This is really fun. This is probably tuned in 2005. I know, and it's still running. <laughs> that's the craziest part. That's I plan amazing. To, I plan to go S300 and, and get a the ECU all figured out so we can see what's going on, make sure everything's good. But with it running like this, like Leave I'm it alone shocked. almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know what's hilarious is we've been beating on it. Coolant temps are good. Everything's great. Still got a full gas tank, mm -hmm. <laughs> like ready to go. These so are still fun. really cheap. If you if you can find one, it doesn't have the legacy of the other cars, yes. but it still has the same drivetrain to the other cars. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you just want to get into Hondas and you're like too scared to buy these dumb expensive Civics right now, like try the Prelude. They're I think you'll have a great time. And they're actually the fifth gens are pretty rare. I I looked it up because 
um, that's 2000 numbers are low. Yeah. These are actually were made less in the US. Is it really? It was like, I think 58,000 in the US. Oh, wow. Yeah, for made. a Honda, that's not that much because mm -hmm. they made a million of those other cars. Yeah. Right? And it's good to meet you and kind of see the whole process behind the scenes. It was cool. I've been a long time viewer since like 2014. So Wild. I've seen all the different Hondas and Preludes and sure. Mustangs and all that kind of stuff. That kind of, so. you know, it brings me back to uh, that first Turbo RSX I did. The, the oh, one, the Jordan's. one that, that walked almost, yeah, like, took yeah. you off the road. The oh, yeah, one. just no big deal. Open <laughs> diff, but no big deal. <laughs> Do you have an Instagram or anything? Can people find I do. you? do. Yep, it's uh, haste underscore stings. All right, there haste you go. Haste stings. <laughs> there you go. Yep. I upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Have a wonderful VTech day. Goodbye. Big announcement. Super proud to announce my first ever merch collection over at TDIB Merch. Dot com with designs I'm super proud of. So for my first ever collection, make sure to head over to tdibmerch.com and consider supporting the channel. And thanks so much for the support.